This is the, uh, the fifth video in the integration section, and this is on differential equations. Um, what is a differential equation? Uh, I mean, quite simply, it's an equation that includes a derivative in it. And what we're trying to do as a res result of, of, of solving this the, the differential equation is to, to actually get a, a relationship between, in our case, it's just two variables, um, you know, y and x or, or or whatever, depending on what the problem is. Um, <clears throat> so if we can ascertain the underlying non-differential equation that gives rise to that dif differential equation, we've got a relationship between the variables, let's say typically two, two variables that we're thinking about at A level. Now, there are there are lots of forms of differential equations. I mean, there, and there are lots of different techniques for solving them. Um, some differential equations can't be solved by any sort of uh, analytical means. You know, we, we we may have to resort to numerical methods. But anyway, we're interested in hearing an analytical solutions. Where do they come from? Uh, well, it basically... They represent things that happen in real life. And we can illustrate here with the, the, the growth of a colony of rabbits could be described by a differential equation. So if we say that the rate of growth of the population, so the, the size of the population is, is N, um, and T represents time. So if the rate of growth of the population population is proportional to the number of rabbits in the colony let's say so that sounds quite reasonable doesn't it as there are more rabbits they they will breed faster so if n's the number of rabbits at any point in time t whatever units months let's say uh, then <clears throat> the n dt which is the rate of change is proportion proportional to n okay quite simply that and then um as we've done uh, previously in maths when we're looking at proportionality if we want to actually represent that proportionality statement as an equation then we need our constant of proportionality in here which we very often usually in fact denote with a k so we've got this pretty simple equation in this case dn dt equals um k times n all right so that is a differential equation that represents um, the growth of a population let's just elaborate that a bit a bit further so that's what we've got um so the solution to this invariably involves doing integration and the integration will give us some general form of the solution um what we've essentially got though is a is an infinite infinite number of solutions um and the reason is that we've got one for each possible value of this the the constant of integration so when we integrate we we have our constant of integration and if we think of that graphically it really mean it really says right here's a whole family of curves that could fit that differential equation and in the case of this one here, where we've got the constant of proportionality, um, then obviously that's uh, you know that 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 makes it more general. So so essentially, until we can actually solve for the constant of proportionality and the and the constant of integration, um, then you know we've not really got anything that's that that is terribly useful so we might do the general form which actually shows that we can solve differential equations but we're not going to really going to be able to do with anything with the with the result so um <clears throat> okay so what we will need in order to resolve for k and c if we use those letters for our constant of proportionality and our constant of integration uh, we need boundary conditions um, not all problems that you will encounter will necessarily have a constant of proportionality. Um, you may be given a, a differential equation that um, that assumes um, uh, a particular constant of, uh, of uh, proportionality. It might just be part of the model that has been put forward. Um, 
but if you go through an integration process, then you will you will end up with a constant of integration. So um, what we got here? So this is our equation here. Uh, now, if we rearrange this, so I'm going to bring the n over onto this side here. Um, if there was any t's, we'd want them on the on on the right hand side. Um, the, uh, there isn't a t in this case. Um, so we've got this one over nd and dt equals k. Now, if we if we integrate both sides with respect to t, so that's what you know uh, we do with this equation. If we do the same thing to both sides of the equation, uh, we get uh, we get this. <laughs> okay, the integral of one over n d and dt with respect to dt equals the integral integral of k dt. All right, so I'll just scroll down a bit. So that's is what we've got. Now um we've got the the chain rule here. The chain rule is um uh, as I think may have said before, it's a little bit like cancellation for calculus, really. These two dts will disappear. <laughs> and um, and so we're just left with this. So we're going to integrate this one over n with respect to n and we're going to integrate the k with respect to t with respect to t here now um one thing you should say is this particular step we don't normally actually bother with it really um so if we can imagine that we just uh kind of cross multiplied this dt up here as well as the n down here and stuck a couple of integral signs that's effectively what what we do, but I think it's useful just to realize that actually in 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 doing that, then we are actually doing the same thing to both sides of the equation. That is to say, integrating with respect to T. <clears throat> OK, so if we apply our integration rules here, um, this is a log function. So this is going to be a natural log of N is going to be equal to KT. Well, this is a constant, isn't it? So KT, so that's our constant of proportionality. And then we introduce a constant here, which is the constant of integration. Uh, now to kind of work this through, if we exponentiate both sides, we're going to get N equals, um, or e to the power of natural log of n is going to be n, and then e to the power of kt plus c. Now, uh, we can rewrite that as a, e to the power of kt plus e to the power of c. Uh, now, written it's c1 here, if you haven't noticed. Um, and, and essentially, this is just a constant, e to the power of c1. Um, and we're multiplying e to the kt by it. So really, we can just call this you know, a different con constant. Uh, I've used big C here. I mean, until we actually resolve it, it doesn't matter. As, lo as long as it's a constant, um, it doesn't matter. And you, you'll notice that we didn't actually use the constant of, of integration on the left-hand side of the equation because all you would have to do is just subtract that constant from both sides and you just end up with a constant anyway. So it's kind of what, what I would refer to as kind of repurposing the constant. So you've got a constant in there. Um, and as long as you do stuff to it, like uh, exponentiate it and so on, you still you still end up with a constant. So, so we can uh, so, so we can happily use the same same letter. But if you really wanted to be um, uh, nitty picky about it, then you could actually denote them with different letters. Okay, so we've got n equals c e to the power of k t. There we go, and this is called the general solution. So say this describes a whole family of um, of, of different curves <clears throat> and um it, it, it's uh, it sort of gives us a, a relationship between n and t but of course we can't do anything with it as i just said uh, until we actually know what c and k is all right um so yeah, all that would say is well, well we've got um a sort of an exponential relationship and uh, this as we'll see is the starting value it's the value of n when t equals zero so you know it gives you a little bit of information but uh, but it wouldn't enable you to predict the size of the rabbit population after three months or something like that so what else have we got? OK, so this is where we need our, our boundary conditions to uh, to resolve. 
So if let's say we know the color of size is 100 at time t equals zero, so that's our starting position, um, uh, beginning of the time that we're measuring, there are 100 rabbits in this colony. Uh, if we substitute uh, uh, n equals 100 and t equals zero into there, we get this. And because c to the power of zero is one, of course, this gives us c equals 100. So this is our equation here, n equals 100 e to the power of kt. <clears throat> And uh, if, let's say, we also know that at time t equals 10, n equals 500, okay, we can substitute those numbers now into, into this sort of uh, next stage of the equation. 500 equals 100 e to the power of 10k, and e to the power of 10k equals 5, and so on. Work that through using our, our, our log rules. k equals 1 tenth natural log of 5, and that value of k therefore is 0.16123 decimal places um okay so uh, so now if we we substitute that in for k we've got this equation here and this is called a particular solution it's, it's actually specific to these two boundary conditions so there's a oh, to this huge family of of possible curves that we could have uh, there's only one that meets these two boundary conditions and that's this one the particular solution so now we can use this this n uh, so well we can use this equation uh, to predict n from a value of t, uh, of t. 15 weeks or something like that, we can actually calculate what this is. Uh, or we could do it the other way around as well. If we if we know the population size that we're interested in, we could find out uh, <clears throat> using, uh, you know, solving log equations, um, what the value of T would be corresponding to that uh, particular um, size. We'd have to na uh, take the, the natural log of both sides to, to do that. Okay, so um, that is it really. So let's have a look at one or two examples. Um, find the general solution to the differential equation dx dt equals 9t squared plus 4t. Right. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so I've 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 done the sort of the long form here. dx dt are integrating with respect to t equals uh, the right hand side with respect to t. Um, done my cancellation there, if you like the chain rule cancellation, giving me simply that, and then we can integrate this side with respect to x. Well, this is one dx really, isn't it? So that's just x, uh, and this is going to be by the power rule. Um, this, okay. So with our constant of integration, it does say find the general solution to the differential equation. So uh, so that is it. And of course, as said before, this really covers a whole uh, infinite uh, set of curves. So then it goes on to say find the particular solution to the differential equation ds dx equals 4e to the power of 2x. <clears throat> Given that the graph of s against x passes through the point zero five. So this is a boundary condition here. We've got the connected pair here of, of, of s and x, uh, or x zero s equals five. Um, so what have we got? So uh, again, I've, I've, I've used this long form. I'll, I shall, I'll, I'll stop doing this soon and uh, just go into the kind of shorthand way of doing it. Um, but um, so so we've got that and integrate the right-hand side with respect to uh, x as well. So those cancels out, we've just got ds. So the integral of 1 with respect to s is just s. And on the right-hand side, we've got 2 e to the power of 2x, and uh, plus our constant of integration. But here we've got a boundary condition when x equals 0, s equals 5. We can stick those in there. Stick the five in there, stick the two in here, work that through. Um, just have a look at that. That's going to give us that C equals three. So therefore, uh, that's it. Yeah, basically S equals two e to the power of two X plus three. That is our particular solution to this differential equation, given this boundary condition. Right, 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 right. So we'll look at another example.
<clears throat> right. So this is a bit more typical of the sort of thing that you you, you might see. This is a sort of real life problem. Uh, a large weather balloon is being inflated. The rate of change of its volume, dvdt, where v is the volume of the balloon at 10, 10 minutes after inflation commenced, is inversely, inversely proportional to its volume. Okay, form a differential equation to describe the relationship between v and t as it is inflated. Okay, so, well, this is it, dvdt is proportional to 1 over v. Um, and putting our constant of proportionality in, then we've got this uh, this here. So this is uh, it's not quite the same, is it, as our rabbits, uh, because this is uh, inversely proportional. <laughs> right, the rate of inflation of the balloon is 10 cubic meters per minute when its volume is 20. Use this information to find the constant of proportionality. So here we go with our boundary condition when V equals 20 dV dt equals 10. Now I, I might say that uh, um, not all the boundary conditions don't always necessarily connect at say V and T in this case. Uh, we've actually our boundary condition is actually um, uh, actually defines the rate so just watch out for that um you know it um it does crop up sometimes and uh, what it does mean is that we can find the, the find k without doing any integration okay so that's just what we're going to do here so uh so we've got these boundary conditions and we're going to apply it to this equation here so put our dv dt of 10 in and our v of 20, and that's going to give us k equals 200. Okay, so we can see dv dt equals 200 over v, which is what we just put in here for start of b. Show that the general solution to the differential equation found in part a is this v squared equals 400t plus c. Okay, so this is what we've got to. So... I can say not always, you know, in this case, we've sort of done a little process ourselves to actually get the constant of proportionality. But we could be we could easily be given this as the start of the problem and said that this is the relationship. Anyway, so if we follow our process um, and what I've done here is I've skipped out the 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 chain rule uh, cancellation and just gone straight to separating the variables. So we've got V dV equals 200 dT. Then we take the integral of both sides. So uh, so I've got that. So uh, the integral of V is V squared over 2, and the integral of 200 is 200 T plus our constant of integration. Um, and uh, so we multiply through by 2. We've got V squared equals 400 T plus C. I mean, this C is cost twice this C, but it's just a constant at the end of the day. And until we resolve for it, then it doesn't matter. Call the constant anything and reuse the name if we want. Um, <clears throat> OK, let's go on. C part one. When not in use, the weather balloon is stored flat and so can initially be considered to have a volume of zero. Use this information to find a particular solution to the differential equation now um this uh, this kind of illustrates something is in in that we're not always um um the, the the boundary conditions are not always explicit sometimes we have to sort of glean them from what has been stated here this isn't too difficult um because basically it's saying when t equals zero v equals zero yeah, so that's really what that, that says. But it's before you start to inflate it. All right, so um, so if this is our general solution, this is our boundary condition, then uh, if we plug our V and our T in there, we're going to see that actually C is equal to zero. So this, therefore, is our particular solution. Okay, with, uh, with C equals zero. 
Um, so and now this is um, useful. We can, you know, we can use it to predict v from a value of t or vice versa. And in this case, we're given a t, um, a value of t in part two. What is the volume of the balloon after twenty five minutes? Um, okay, so we just have to stick our twenty five in there. That's going to multiply by four hundred. That's going to give us v squared. And when we take the square root um, to find v, then it turns out to be a hundred cubic meters. Okay, so um, there's a couple of examples, I think, that uh, uh, hopefully help to illustrate what we're talking about. Um, there will be further examples on separate videos, uh, but I think we've probably done enough in this video for now. There is also um, a uh, another video on, uh, on further differential equations which kind of deals with slightly more complicated situations um, than we've looked at here. But this this sort of thing is a, a very typical question that you might get in in an exam. So if you if you can if you can follow this through and uh, and possibly even you know do it yourself, um, then you should be in reasonably good uh, position then. Okay, so uh, thanks for listening.